Hi, this is uh, Eric with uh, Survival Medicine. Uh, I'm going to talk about strep throat. Uh, and to begin with, just the disclaimer. Uh, again, this is um, medical information in case you are not able to seek a physician's care. Uh, this is not intended to replace a doctor. Um, but if you find yourself in a situation such as after an earthquake or hurricane or traveling overseas where uh, medical help is very limited, uh, just some basic things on what to do. Uh, and uh, how to diagnose and treat. So again, uh, talking about strep throat today. So our first question is, well, what is strep throat? Uh, strep throat is an infection involving uh, the pharynx, which is basically what most people think of as the throat, kind of behind the tongue uh, and going down towards the esophagus. Uh, strep throat is a bacterial infection, and it, it's mostly in kids, uh, ages 3 to 15, although it can happen to any of us. Uh, and it's caused by a bacteria call, uh, called Group A beta hemolytic streptococcus. Uh, and then the other name is Strep pyogenes. That's the actual bacteria that causes it. Uh, there's uh, several different uh, group types of strep, uh, you know, A through G, I believe. Um, but Group A is the one that causes strep throat that we all know and love most commonly. Well, if you uh, look back in somebody's throat, and uh, I suggest that you spend time looking in people's normal throats so you get an idea of what normal looks like, because uh, then it makes it a lot easier when you see something that's not normal. Uh, you may not know exactly what it is, but you can say that's not what normal looks like. And here's a uh, very technical drawing of the back of a throat. This is the uvula, also known as the hangy down thingy. And if you have your tonsils, haven't had them taken out, they are on either side. They can be of different sizes and different people. Some have some people have naturally very large tonsils, some have very small tonsils. But the ones that are infected, they will typically get enlarged, get red, and um, <clears throat> have a white covering on it called an exudate. Uh, this is just uh, debris material from cells. So uh, diagnosing strep throat, again, you'll see red swollen tonsils. You'll see the exudate, which is that white covering on the tonsils you'll get enlarged lymph nodes and these are typically are on the front of the the throat or the neck on either side of your windpipe or trachea uh, and so you can sometimes feel small tender nodules along that uh, and then not always but uh, fever uh, uh, can be present uh, with strep throat now here's an important thing if you have a sore throat but you also have a cough and you have a runny nose this is most likely not strep throat and it's just going to be a viral infection that doesn't require any antibiotics whatsoever. So again, if you've got other upper respiratory symptoms, coughing, sneezing, runny nose, sinus symptoms, uh, then it makes it a lot less likely that it's going to be strep throat. Now there is uh, a study that was done uh, and has been looked at a couple times. Uh, and uh, Dr. Centaur was one of the key people that came up with this and so it's called the Centaur criteria and if you apply these rules you will diagnose strep throat in about 40 percent 40 to 60 percent of the cases so I'll give you you know if we just say 50 50 chance if you have these four things then you have at least a 50 percent chance of being right that it's strep throat and what I do in the emergency room is if I have a patient that comes in and they meet these criteria, I don't do a strep screen, I don't do a throat culture, I just go ahead and treat them. So here are the Centaur criteria right here. Number one, you've had a history of fever. Number two, you've got that white junk on your tonsils, the exudate. And I'll stick uh, into this video, um, uh, a video of somebody's throat that I saw just the other day. It's not great quality, but hopefully it'll give you an idea of what that exudate looks like. You have tender lymph nodes, uh, and again, the medical term is tender anterior cervical adenopathy. These are the tender lymph nodes on the th front of your neck on either side of the trachea. And very importantly, absence of cough. So you meet these four, and to me, that's enough to go ahead and diagnose and treat strep throat. Now, there's other things that can cause pain in the throat. Um, what are they? Well, you you can have a viral sore throat and this is probably one of the most common things that we see and if it's a virus you don't need antibiotics taking antibiotics uh, can be very helpful when appropriate but antibiotics have risks with it it can cause diarrhea it can cause allergic reactions it can cause resistant strains of bacteria 
So I think it's very important that we only use antibiotics when it's appropriate. Uh, another type of uh, viral infection can be mono. Uh, and then here are some things that can be very dangerous that we need to know about. Um, peritonsal or abscess is a, an infection that gets uh, in the tissues around the tonsils but deep inside. And with, when you have an abscess, uh, that can only really be treated by draining the pus out. Uh, antibiotics typically won't make that go away and you have to get that pus drained out. If it's a very simple uh, peritonsal abscess, uh, we can do that in the emergency room, but very commonly that requires the uh, OR, where you have to go and have an a ENT surgeon drain that out for you. Like the um, peritonsal abscess, you can get a retropharyngeal abscess. So this is an abscess in the back of the throat, between the wall of the back of the throat and basically your spinal um, bones uh, of the cervical spine. And again, that, that abscess is very dangerous and it can quickly travel down into your chest and make people very sick. And again, that will require going to the operating room as well. Epiglottitis, we used to see uh, most commonly in kids, uh, but now this is becoming more frequent in adults because of uh, vaccinations here in the United States. If you travel abroad, that uh, does not hold true, and you can still see this in children. The epiglottis is a piece of tissue that protects the uh, windpipe, the trachea, from the uh, esophagus. So when you swallow, it covers the trachea so food doesn't go into your windpipe. That little tissue flap uh, can get infected and get very large and fat. Um, and if it gets too big, uh, it will fall over and occlude and block your trachea so that you can't breathe, you can't get air into your lungs. So again, this is another uh, key emergency that uh, requires advanced medical care. Ludwin's angina. Uh, this is infection involving the, the spaces uh, underneath the tongue and the floor of the mouth. Um, what you can see on these patients is underneath their lower jaw the tissue under there gets very swollen and very hard and very tender, sometimes red. And again, that can be a, a very dangerous thing, again, requiring the operating room and IV antibiotics. And finally, this is somewhat rare, uh, but tracheitis, which is a bacterial infection in the trachea, um, <clears throat> can make people very, very sick and again, occlude airways. It requires IV antibiotics and uh, special care. So these are the dangerous types of sore throats that you can see. Um, these are uncommon. Uh, I think it's important that you know uh, that there can be dangerous things that can masquerade as just a simple sore throat. Uh, these were common. Uh, viral sore throat, mono, strep, the, will be a, a vast majority of people with sore throat.